Hello, my name is Tom Rummage, and this afternoon we're going to take this espresso cup, ge generously donated by our uh, Italian distributor, Luxinger, and we're going to put a temperature sensor down near the base and a, a strain gauge sensor here on the handle. Now, I don't expect to see a lot of signal from either one of them, but we want to demonstrate that it can be done on a ceramic coated, uh, I mean, this is probably an acrylic fired acrylic coating, and how to install that gauge and or the temperature sensor. First step will be to take the CSM3, the degreaser, and I'm going to work on the, the temperature sensor first since it's, oh no, excuse me, the strain gauge first since it's up here on the handle, and I'll do the temperature sensor second. So I'm saturating the gauze sponge with the CSM3, and I'm going to degrease the handle. This gets away of any finger oils or any contaminants that might be a problem. The next step, because this is a fairly um, fine finish, we want to start with some 400 grit silicon carbide abrasive paper. It's too smooth and a strain gauge would not uh, transmit strain very well. So we're going to first dry abrade with the 400 grit silicon carbide abrasive paper. And I'm just basically making it into a matte finish. The adhesive has to have something to grab hold of or bite into. Okay, having completed that dry abrade, I'm now going to take some of the 400 grit silicon carbide abrasive paper and I'm going to wet abrade with the conditioner A, the mild phosphoric acid solution, red tip bottle. And again, I hate to keep putting Luxinger's name on the back side, but I'm, I'm right handed, so this is a little tricky. So, what we'll do is we'll wet the silicon, gum pad, uh, silicon carbide abrasive paper. And again, I'm just going to lightly abrade the surface and the conditioner A further removes any organic contamination. Take a clean dry gauze sponge because we don't want that to dry on the surface and recontaminate it. I'll dry that surface. Next step will be to scrub it with the conditioner A. We want to get rid of any loose particles that we uh, loosen with that uh, abrasion. And then I'm going to scrub with the conditioner A and a cotton tip applicator. Again, as before, we don't want this to dry on the surface, so I'm going to take a gauze sponge and dry it. Any contaminants are being absorbed into the gauze sponge and not left behind. The last step before we uh, prepare to position the gauge and bond it will be to use the Neutralizer 5A and I'm going to scrub with the Neutralizer 5A. This stops the etching action of the mild phosphoric acid solution and also brings the pH to either a neutral or slightly basic which the M-Bond 200 we're going to be using requires. And the final step before installing the gauge would be to dry the surface. So now we have a burnished surface that is prepared for bonding that's chemically clean and has the right pH. The next step, I'm just going to toss away one of these top sheets of paper, is to prepare and position the strain gauge. We're going to be using the C4A 125SL350 strain gauge. This is a, an advanced sensor technology stress analysis gauge with pre-attached lead wires. This one happens to have three conductor and nine feet of lead wire pre-attached. So the first step, we have to clean the surface which we're going to be working on. I'll take this clean glass plate and I'm going to take some neutralizer 5A and a gauze sponge. I'm going to clean the surface. I'm now going to expose the strain gauge, taking it out of the little plastic bag that it comes in. I'm also going to take loose the lead wire so that it doesn't uh, mechanically cause us a problem down the road. Now, being careful now, we have now exposed an unbonded strain gauge which is susceptible to damage. I'm just going to kind of let this lay on the table there. Take the gauge handling tape, PCT3M, 
Take about two or three inches and throw it away because we don't want any contamination. Now this is going to vary slightly because of the lead wire pre-attached. I'm going to run the tape instead of along the length of the strain gauge transverse to the long axis of the strain gauge. So put two little handles on the back of my gauge handling tape. Take a gauge and lay it out on the uh, glass plate and then attach the gauge handling tape to it, lifting at a shallow angle. I'm going to pull the gauge off. I'm going to bring my uh, cup handle into position here. And this is really tricky business because you're at this point you're very susceptible to damage of the gauge when it, it's unbonded shape. So I'm not going to position it where I want it to land. This is the position, the final position of the gauge. I'll expose the bonding surface. Taking the catalyst C on the inside of the neck of the bottle I'm taking about eight or ten swipes. Getting rid of most of the catalyst C. We need just a very tiny little amount. And then I'm going to use the brush to put a single wipe across the back of the gauge to put the catalyst C on. And now I'll wait one full 60 second minute. All right, having waited our one minute of full air dry time for the catalyst C, I'm going to open the m 200. I'm going to have a gauze sponge at the ready for squeegeeing the adhesive out. I'm going to drop a single drop at the cusp of the tape and the handle. And then with a single squeegeeing motion, oh, this is a little tricky, a little tiny cup. I'm going to position the strain gauge and then hold my thumb on the strain gauge for one full 60 second minute. Okay, I've finished my one minute under the thumb and we have allowed it to rest for two minutes. And so now I'm going to remove the gauge handling tape. As with any strain gauge, you want to take the tape and pull it 180 degrees back on itself, putting the adhesive into shear as opposed to peel. And note I'm kind of leading it toward the lead wire as opposed to away from the lead wire. And the gauge appears to be fairly well bonded, no problem so far. But in order to avoid any real damage, I'm going to take some PCT or PDT uh, 3 paper drafting tape and I'm going to tape this down as a strain relief. Don't want to put any extra strain on that lead wire system because the gauge is susceptible to being pulled off at this point. And there we go. And I need to lead this off to the side because we're going to put a temperature sensor near the bottom and I don't want it to be in the way while I'm doing that temperature sensor so I'm going to lead the wire up off this side. Don't want to put it over the logo. Luxinger would be a little un unhappy. So I've strain relief the wire in a positive manner so it's not going to have any effect when I'm trying to do the surface preparation down here on the bottom for the temperature sensor. Voila! The last step, as with any strain gauge that's going to be exposed to the, uh, the environment for any period of time, is to put down an environmental protection. Our M code A is the environmental protection of choice in this case. Take the brush cap applicator and just mop it around. I'm not trying to paint for a show car finish because this is an environmental protection. We want it to protect the gauge. And in order to do that, it has to be very evenly and fairly thickly sped around. And now we wait 24 hours full cure. Thank you, Luxinger. Environmental protection is also going to enhance the strain relief of the lead wire. All right, now that we've bonded this strain gauge to the handle of the cup, we're going to put some freshly brewed espresso in it to heat it up and see what happens to the output. I expect a little bit of a change because this is a ceramic cup that has uh, 
a th coefficient of thermal expansion that might not be the same as that of the strain gauge itself. And look at that. Went from zero microstrain up to about minus nine, nine, and now it's beginning to cool off again. As it begins to cool, the, t the, the strain level will go back to zero. The thermal effects are obvious, and we'd have to take those out of the picture when we're making a real strain measurement. Seems like it's soaking back into the handle now. See as it's slightly going up. 